Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today, hey, I got a special uh, midweek video here for everyone. It's uh, today's uh, Wednesday, August 4th, 2021. Listen, I got a couple questions this week about uh, Apple's current dividend. Uh, Apple declared a dividend a couple days ago that goes ex dividend date on uh, Friday, August 5th, which is, no, I'm sorry, this weekend, August 6th. Let me check the date here real quick. So yes, so Friday, August 6th, and two days from now is the ex-dividend date for Apple's uh, dividend. So, and, and people are selling covered calls on these things uh, on Apple. So there's there's a relationship between selling covered calls and being aware of the dividend that a company reports. So this uh, special video that I'm making today uh, is specifically about Apple, but it, it can apply to any company that uh, has a dividend coming up. And if you're currently a, a, a call option seller, as a naked call option seller, or selling covered calls, specifically covered calls. So I want to go over this little video and, and make you aware of what could happen if you're holding a covered call that you've sold, a short covered call, while a company declares a dividend. And um, you could you could be in for a surprise, something that you didn't know before. If you've if you've never really sold covered calls before, I want you to be aware of this situation. So let's jump right in and talk about this. So the lesson here is selling covered calls and dividend dates. It's it's very important to be aware of when a company is is paying out a dividend, but specifically the ex dividend date. So you know, I just want you to make sure you're reading these things. If you're a seller of call options, whether that's covered calls or naked calls. You could be assigned early on those covered calls before you ever thought that you could be assigned. Uh, and the kicker is that you'll have to pay the dividend to the, the stockholder. So let's jump back for a second and, and just make sure we're all on the same page. A stockholder will receive a dividend from the company when they pay out the dividend. A call option buyer or a call option holder is not privy to those dividends. So if you're a call option buyer and a company declares a dividend, you're not gonna receive those dividends unless you are a shareholder. So what call option buyers do, if it's, if it's beneficial, they will exercise those call options early, which turns their call options into actual shares of stock. So then they become actual shareholders and then they can receive the dividends. That's what happens. That's what a lot of call option buyers can do. They can exercise their options early if it's beneficial to do so. And I will show you what makes it beneficial. So I want everyone to understand that if you're a call option seller, cover calls, you need to be aware of this. Now, the ex-dividend date is probably the most important date here. You know, the ex-dividend date comes before the actual dividend is paid. The ex-dividend date is uh, the, the, the cutoff date where you have to be shareholders in the company, which actually you have to be uh, a, an owner of those shares the day before the ex-dividend date, okay? So if... Let's talk about Apple here for a second. Apple's got a dividend coming up, and they go ex-dividend date on Friday, this Friday, August 6th. So you have to be a shareholder on record before August 6th. So that means August 5th. Basically, you have to have shares of Apple in your account on by the end of trading on August 5th in order to receive that dividend. Okay, so any call option buyer that is holding and in the money call option could exercise that option early before August 6th to take ownership of the shares and then to receive the dividend. Now, if you're the call option seller, you may get assigned early and you'll have to pay out the dividend to the, the shareholders if you don't take action on your short call. So let's run down what you can do on both sides of the transaction to make sure that you're doing it properly. Now, Apple's dividend is is 22 cents a share. That's what they've declared. So the call option always consists of, or any option consists of 100 shares of stock. So in that case, it'll be $22 for every call option that is that is held, okay? One call option is 100 shares. So we're talking 22 actual dollars that are on the line here that a call option buyer would exercise their shares just to receive those $22 for every 100 shares that they own. So in this case, if a call option buyer, and hence 
the person on the other side, the call option seller, is holding a in-the-money call option, then they have to decide if it's worth it for them to exercise that call option early to capture the dividend. Now, what will what will make the the person or the call option buyer decide that it's 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 worth it for them to exercise that call option? Well, you have to compare the size of the dividend, which is 22 cents, versus the time premium that's left in that option contract. Okay, so here's here's what I'm talking about. What's the tipping point in deciding to exercise early? If the dividend payout is greater than the time value of the option, then assignment will happen or exercise will happen. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, what's time value? I don't understand what you're talking about, Lee. Can you explain what time value is? Yes. Every option contract, I should say every in-the-money option contract is consists of the options price consists of intrinsic value and extrinsic value. That extrinsic value is what's called the time premium. And I'll, and I'll go over some uh, option examples and I'll show you. So as an option gets closer to expiration, if that option is in the money, the time value is, is, is there's a little bit of time value left that if you exercise that option and turn it into shares of stock, you will forego as a profit that extra time value. Okay, so some cases it's better to just sell the call option to capture that time value. When you sell an option, you'll capture that time value. When you exercise an option, you will forego, you will give up that extra time value. And the time value could be a lot of money. So you have to understand what you're doing. You have to understand how much time value is left in that option. Okay, so in Apple's case, the Apple's dividend is 22 cents a share. Is, Is that 22 cents greater or smaller than what's left in the time value of whatever in the money option you're currently holding. Okay. And an easy way to understand or see how much time value is left is you look in the last line right here, you look at the corresponding put options price of that same strike. Okay. So let me, let me pull up the Apple options here and let's go over uh, some, some numbers. So you'll understand whether it's worthy of you exercising and in the money option early to capture the dividend. And we'll talk about what the time value is. So here's Apple options. We got call options over here, put options on the right. So these are Apple options that actually expire on this Friday, August 6, 2021, which is the ex-dividend date. But you'd have to have the shares in your account before that, August 5th. So that's actually tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, August 4th. Tomorrow's August 5th, 2021. So we're very timely here. But let's take a look at some Apple options just to see what we're talking about. Now, Apple's currently trading at $146.75 right here. And let's take a quick look at some some at-the-money options. Now, the 146 calls and puts, the 146 calls, let's look at those. If Apple was to expire today at $146.76, the 146 calls would be in the money by seventy. dollars four cents right now. Okay. You take the stock price and you subtract the call. So 146.75 minus 146 equals 75 cents. On expiration day, these 146 calls should be worth no more than 75 cents per contract. But as you can see here, they're worth a dollar twenty-eight, dollar twenty-nine, that which is greater than the 75 cents of intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is what you get when you subtract the stock the strike price from the stock price. Right now, this 146 call should will be worth 80 cents on expiration day, but we're not at expiration yet. We got two days left. So these 146 calls are worth $1.28, $1.29. So why is it worth more than 80 cents if that's all it's worth on expiration day? Well, that's because you still have some time left. You have two days left. And in order to figure out what that time value is, like I said, you look at the corresponding put option of the same strike. The put option is worth 67 or 68 cents. That is the time value. That is the extrinsic value. So what you would do is, obviously, this this put this call option, the 146 calls, has intrinsic value of you know 80 cents a contract plus another 67, 68 cents. You add those two together, and you get its current value of a a dollar 32, a dollar 31, whatever. Okay. So we're, we're talking about is it 
is it smart to exercise an in the money option right before a dividend payment? Now, Apple's dividend is 22 cents a share. Let's just say you had purchased the 135 calls, you know, a month or two ago, hoping that Apple would go up in price. And on the other side, you have the op, the, the call option seller who was, has some Apple shares themselves, but they wanted to sell some covered calls, bring in some extra cash. So you sold the 135 call strike at the time. Maybe, maybe Apple was trading at $135 at the time. So you figured I'll sell the at the money 135 calls. Well, you can see Apple has rallied up to $1.4686 right now. So these 135 calls are in the money by almost $12 a share. And if you're the call option holder, you need to decide now, is it worth it for me to exercise these, these call options and take ownership of the shares so I can get the 22 cent dividend that Apple will be paying out? And I have to exercise these call options by tomorrow, I guess, August 5th. And it also depends on how fast your broker turns around and, and actually turns them into shares of stock. So you need to talk with your broker about that. I don't want to give any wrong information, but the shares need to be in the, your account by end of day, August 5, which is tomorrow. So you have these 135 calls. So what you do is you, you see how much time value is left by looking at the corresponding put option price, which is one or two cents a contract. So there's like no time value left whatsoever. This, this call option is basically all intrinsic value. So you're seeing that, well, 22 cents dividend is greater than two cents. So that means it will be smart to exercise these call options, turn them into shares of stock, and I'll capture the 22 cent dividend. Now, the person on the other side, the call option seller that, you know, you sold these covered calls, Apple's risen high. So you know that you're going to get assigned at some point. But the key here is that if you get assigned, you're on the hook to pay out the $22 a share, um, 22 cents per share uh, on these call options. So if you sold one call option and you get assigned early before you realize what's going on, not only are you going to now have short 100 shares of Apple in your account at $135 a share, which you knew when you sold the cover calls, but now you're going to have to pay an extra $22 out of your pocket to the uh, option holder, this anonymous other person. Your, your broker will debit your account $22 uh, for that call option that, that you sold. Now, if you sold 10 call options, you're, you're out $220. So you need to be very aware of, of how much time value is left in these call options if you're you know, a covered call seller. Um, now, the 140 calls are, are in the money as well, and those that time premium is worth, time value is worth $0.05. Cents. So that's still less than $0.22. Cents. You're, you're at risk of being assigned early. So we need to see where which options are, are, are greater than 22 cents at the moment. So it looks like the 145 calls here, the 145 puts are still worth about 35 cents. So you're still, you're, you're okay, but you're getting, getting close to that 22 cent mark that you, you might need to take action. Now, what kind of action should you take if you're the call option seller, if you're, you know, covered call seller? Well, if you don't want to pay the, the, the dividend payout, you have to get out of your call. You have to get out of that short call. How do you do that? Well, you got to buy the you got to buy the call option back that you sold, uh, or you roll your your short call out to a further expiration date. Let's take a look August twentieth, which is our the monthly expiration. Now the one thirty five calls here, the puts are twenty two, twenty seven cent, twenty eight cent ass. So that's very close to the uh, dividend payment as well. So anything that's deep in the money here, Apple's trading at 147, all these in the money call strikes are, you have to check the, the time value. Now, if you sold the 140 calls, um, the, the, the 140 puts have a extrinsic or time premium of 60 cents. So you're safe on these. Okay, so if you're holding these August 20th and you sold the 140 covered calls, you're still safe because the time premium of 60 cents is greater than the dividend of 22 cents. So you are not in any danger of being assigned early unless you've got a call option buyer who just doesn't understand the game and they they 
exercise their options early, which would be detrimental to them because they'll forego the 60 cent time premium. They'll get the dividend of 22 cents, but they'll lose out on the 60 cents here. So they'll actually lose out on, you know, 38, 39 cent uh, of extra profit. Okay. So if you have, if you've sold any covered calls and they happen to be in the money right now and the company is about to declare or is ready to declare a dividend, you need to be aware of that, the ex-dividend date of that company. So if you're holding a, a, a covered call that's in the money, you need to look at the, the whatever time premium is left and compare it to the dividend price. And then you'll know whether you need to take action. And when I, and, and those two action plays are you either buy those covered calls back and you know pay whatever they're worth or you roll the option meaning you buy your covered call option back and then you sell a further out expiration date covered call if you still want to remain in the trade okay so it's very important i got some questions about that this week so i hope that answers it let's go back to uh my cheat sheet here so understand that um if you sell covered calls and and the company's about to announce an earnings and that option is in the money, make sure that whatever time premiums left is greater uh, than the, whatever the dividend payment is for that stock. Okay. So just be aware. Now that I had a situation that I got taken by surprise. This was just me being lazy. I had to pay out the dividend on, I had a, I had a call spread that I had sold that I forgot about the dividend being paid out and I was exercised early or signed early and I had to pay out the dividend a couple hundred dollars, which I was not happy about. I just, I had forgotten about it. So be aware, any covered call that you sell or naked call that you sell, understand when the company announces dividends uh, because you know you may be on the hook to, to shell out more money than you thought you'll have to pay for those dividends. All right, so that's the special edition of uh, the, the midweek special edition of, of selling covered calls and, and being aware of dividend dates. I hope this has been helpful for some of you. If so, please give me a thumbs up on this YouTube video. Leave me a comment. Share your, share your own stories if you wish. Send me an email, and uh, I hope this has been helpful. This is Lee Lowell signing off.